guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weezy Died Laughing and I'm here with my weekly wrap up. I got four books read this week since the last time I talked to you and the first book I read was an amazing five star read and that was Mary Robinson's autobiography, Everybody Matters. Mary Robinson was Ireland's first female president and she was also the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights after she was president of Ireland as well. She is an absolutely amazing, inspiring woman and this is basically just her memoir about um, her growing up, uh, her time in college, why she decided to go into um, kind of politics and why she decided to run for the presidency and then just her time and her experiences during the presidency and during her time in the UN um, and just the different things that she fought for, the different people that she meets um, and it is just so amazing. I didn't know that much about Mary Robinson um, other than the fact that she was the first female president of Ireland. Um, until I read this book. I can genuinely say that she is one of my heroes now. She is like a feminist icon. Um, she has done so much in her life um, to help improve the lives of women um, in Ireland and elsewhere. A professor in Trinity College at a very young age, she um, was in the Senate in Ireland when she was very young as well and some of the first things she tried to do was to try and improve the contraception laws in Ireland at the time, um, which were that people couldn't buy or sell contraception um, in Ireland, which was absolutely insane. Um, and around the same time, um, divorce in Ireland was illegal as well and she tried different bills and different things to try and get these things eradicated or at least improved to try and better the lives of women. Um, um, because she she was of the thought that the only some of the people who were affected the most by these laws were women and she's just tried her entire life just to help people in general not just women but also when she was the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights as well and um, when she was the president of Ireland as well she's visited um, Somalia during the famine she visited Rwanda shortly after the genocide um, and she also finished pla uh, visited places like uh, Chechnya um, and she's just seen a lot of like different like horrible things or like the aftermath of horrible things and has tried to help where she could just Oh, she's just so intelligent and the way this is written is written in this really intelligent yet quite easy to read way as well um and i do think that i mean there are some names in this that, you, that people who aren't irish or don't know that much about Ir irish politics or just ireland in general might not know but i'd still feel like just in general her journey and just the way she's able to um just the way she's able to write her her life so far is just so accessible and I think a lot of people would really really enjoy this um, and she has a kind of like a dry humour in it as well which I really enjoyed and I could tell that she kind of is someone you could probably have a little bit of a laugh with um, she also uh, has a podcast um, with another Irish woman called Maeve Higgins. It's called Mothers of Invention. Um, and I have had this podcast on my phone for ages and I've been meaning to listen to it. And while I was listening, while I was reading this book, I decided to start listening to it. Um, and it really helped me kind of get her voice across in my head. So when I was reading this, I could almost hear her and I could almost feel like she was reading it to me. Um, and the podcast Mothers of Invention is brilliant. It is all about kind of climate change and fighting plastic pollution. Um, and it focuses on different women around the world um, who are, you know, in different ways are fighting plastic pollution and trying to make the world a better place. It's a five out of five stars because it was amazing. The next book I finished was James S. A. Corey's Time at Wrath which is the eighth book in the um, Expand series which just came out. Um, actually it didn't come out, sorry, I got a review copy this week. It's out another two weeks. If you guys saw my vlog yet. Um, so I basically got it on Wednesday, I got it in the post on Wednesday. I'd asked my mum to kind of keep an eye on the post because I knew it was coming um, and I started reading it on Wednesday and I finished it on Thursday morning. Um, I do have a physical copy of it but my boyfriend is already reading it so because he is a real he's a really big fan of the series as well. Um, so I'm not going to say too much about this because I feel like I might do a um, video review on it. Um, so all I will say and obviously it is the eighth book as well so I don't want to do too many spoilers but I gave this a five out of five stars as well. Um, I just had quite a good reading week this week. Um, it was just everything I wanted in in the book, um, for the book, it was just so action packed. I felt like I got a real connection with some of the characters in a way I haven't had before in other books. Um, I just feel like I appreciated different parts of their personalities so much more and I, I seem to understand them at a different level than I have had in the other books as well. Um, and I just really, really appreciate it and it was a really nice reading experience for me to suddenly see these different parts of the characters that I might not have had before. And um, yeah, it was just really, really nice. Um, there were some really heartbreaking moments in this book that just made me wanna cry. Um, but the way it ends as well, ends with this really kind of like there's just so much momentum gathering in this book and the next book is going to be the last book it's probably not going to be out for another two years but um the next book is the last book in this big long series um so it's going to be it's going to be huge i didn't like a solid like six hours of reading obviously broken up a bit by sleep um but yeah it was brilliant i absolutely loved it five out of five stars next book i read was horace winter says goodbye by connor bowman and um, this is kind of a cute 
quirky contemporary story about this man called Horace Winter who is um, in his late 60s, he's just retired from the bank, he's kind of a lonely person, um, very solitary, he um, he never got married, he lived with his mother until she died and then he, he had his job in the bank and um, now that he's retired he's suddenly left with kind of like nothing really to do um, and the, all these kind of things kind of start to happen to him where he meets these people um, and he starts trying to help. He meets this little boy who's in a bad place in his family life and he tries to start helping this little boy. Um, then he also starts um, trying to figure out some things about his father's life that he never really knew before. Um, he finds a letter that his father never got to send before his father died um, when he was quite young. Um, so he decides that he's going to try and find this person that his father was trying to send this letter to and he kind of has this own little kind of um, side plot for that. At the same time, Horace Winter is also dealing with um, a terminal illness of his own he's just been diagnosed with a brain tumor and he's trying to fight that at the same time and he's getting medication for that and getting medical treatment and um, but at the same time we kind of know as a reader that it's probably not really going to work out um like in fact we don't we know it's not going to work out um from the first chapter um so this is kind of just this it's it's like a nice book overall and one of the things I really really liked with this book is that Horace Winter is um he's like a butterfly collector a butterfly moth collector and there is the actual like the name of that in this book which I cannot think of right now um but he identifies everyone he meets in his life as either a butterfly or a moth and um, generally the people that he likes are butterflies and the people he doesn't really like are moths and um he's able to identify them as with particular like moth breeds and butterfly breeds um and he's able to describe them and it does really like ring true to the way the kind character is and the way what we get to know about those characters um, and I just really really like that like you know he just meet anyone in the streets and he'd just say butterfly or moth and it was just this really nice kind of thing about him that I quite enjoyed and it was quite amusing at times to um, read. I would say this is a nice mix between A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Backman and Ele Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Um, more airing on the side of Eleanor Oliphant because Winter is also, he's quite a quirky character. Um, the way he talks to people sometimes is a bit odd. He's just, he's just a very odd person and there's almost times when he's talking and the way he's thinking about things you could almost think like is he on the spectrum but at the same time I don't know whether that is it seems like he is because he seemed to be a little bit like that when he was younger as well but he's also dealing with this brain tumor during this uh, book as well which and you can kind of see his his thought process goes a little bit funny sometimes um and you know that that's because of like obviously the brain tumor is affecting his brain in a way um so there are times there's there's times like that and there's times when you see him when he's a little bit younger through flashbacks or memories um and there is a little bit of me that wonders if he could be slightly slightly on the spectrum and um, but I'm not really sure if like the author meant it to be like that but I definitely do think the the way he acts sometimes is also a direct influence of the brain tumor the way the kind of the the two kind of side plots there was a side plot with obviously he was dealing with his illness and then he was also dealing with this thing about in his father's past and then he's also dealing with this little boy that he's trying to help call Max um, and I kind of feel like the three were very very separate and not really together and I kind of feel like there were times that like I don't know I just feel like they could have gelled a little bit better um in the story the three that like all these different these kind of slot side plots to kind of gel together properly into one big plot um and I don't think it really did that for me um, and it kind of felt a little bit I don't know a little bit separate at times the writing was really lovely in this um and I did I did enjoy it overall um as I said I think people who like Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine would probably like this one as well quirky character style um that people might appreciate as well um so I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars the last book I finished this week was an audiobook and it was The Ludlow Lady Society by Anne O'Loughlin and um, this is set in this town in Wicklow in Ireland um, and this woman and um, this American woman come she has um she's gotten this this house as kind of this big fancy house uh it was left in her husband's will to her. Her husband has died uh, a few years previously. We're kind of focusing on a few different women in this village. We're focusing on Connie, who's the American woman who is a widow. There is Eve, who used to be the owner of this house called Ludlow Hall, um, and her husband um, also died, so she is a widow as well. And then we are also following a woman called Hetty, who runs kind of a bed and breakfast, who is also a widow. So we are kind of dealing with these three women um, who are all widows, who've all kind of lost their husbands, who've all had these kind of strange lives with their husbands as well, um, not particularly good ones um and they're all kind of still reeling in the aftermath of their husband's deaths and kind of still in the shadows of their husbands even though their husbands aren't around any anymore um and a lot of them they all have kind of these different different 
different kind of grief and different kind of things they have to work through um, and they all have this kind of really nice friendship that develops um, and it kind of the story kind of goes from there um, I liked this for the most part I have read I read The Ballroom Cafe um, a few months ago by Anna Lachlan I didn't really get on with it that well and um, so I wasn't really sure if I would get on with this one as well because I wasn't sure if maybe it was Anna Lachlan's writing that maybe I just didn't like um, and there were some kind of character things that I recognise in the Ballroom Cafe in this one that I wasn't a huge fan of. I kind of feel like, I don't know, I feel like she kind of sometimes writes her characters like that are like the real assholes or something. And there's times where I just like from the get-go, I kind of don't really like them that much. Um, where this one was a little bit better, there was like Connie, the American woman was a bit of a, she was a bit of an arsehole at the start. Um, you do kind of understand why she's so angry at the world because there's a lot of really tragic things in her past. Um, but there were times where she was talking to people and the way she acted, I was just like, oh, come on, like you don't have to be like that. Um, but I did warm to her eventually. Um, I listened to this in audiobook and it was narrated by a woman called Tara Ward who is Canadian born but lives in the UK and I didn't understand why she was chosen to narrate this book when this book is set in Ireland um so like the normal narration was done in like a British accent like this kind of a mild British accent it wasn't an Irish accent and then every single Irish accent that was in it was this really guttural country like thick country accent and like Wicklow is in the country but it's not like that far into the country that like they would all have these like really guttural accents and like every single accent almost sounded the same like every voice almost sounded the same um and I just feel like you know it, I was just like not everyone in the country sounds like this like there are people who would have softer accents there are people who would have the harsher accents um but they all were just really harsh and I it just wasn't that nice for me to listen to so I wasn't too crazy about the audiobook I'm not sure if I would recommend the audiobook um but I did enjoy this book overall and um, I kind of feel like there were some things happening that were real shock value things um and there were some things that kind of were revealed at the end where I feel like and it was like right at the end and I wasn't sure why they were revealed then instead of a bit further, like a bit in the more of the middle of the book. Um, so yeah, I gave it a three out of five stars overall just in combination of how I enjoyed the book and then how I enjoyed the audiobook narration as well. So three out of five stars. Um, I did enjoy it. I did, enjoyed it more in the Ballroom Cafe, I will say that. Um, but yeah, so that is everything I've read this week. Please let me know what you guys think as always and I'll see you guys again. Bye!